part of the image that is needed for a president is you must be above you must be mm-hmm. seen to be above partisan politics and people just felt good you know yeah. Um, yeah. all going out to get pineapple desserts or, <laughs> or, or, or what not you know you know there was that celebratory mood you know which is yeah, which is yeah. amazing yeah. Now, a slam dunk. That's what we would call Mr. Taman Chanmugaratnam's win in Singapore's presidential race. A win by such a margin that it left uh, no doubt in anyone's mind that he is indeed the chosen one. That is by the people of Singapore. So in this episode, we want to get into some burning questions about the results. Was his landslide victory expected? What do the results say about how Singaporean voters view the presidency? And what will this mean for the next general election? My guests today are Walid Jumblat Abdullah, Assistant Professor at Nanyang Technological University. Hello, hi. Happy to be here. Eugene Tan, Associate Professor of Law at the Singapore Management University. Always nice to be in the heart of the matter. Okay, ooh, <laughs> that's a nice way. Yes, we are going to get to the heart of the matter. So welcome, guys. Uh, let's talk presidential election and talk about the margins first. Because uh, going in, Thaman was termed what some people call the nuclear option, that he would blow the competition out of the water. But Eugene, you were very much around on uh, polling night, sitting in uh, our CNA studio, and actually you looked very surprised when that 70% you know, sample count first came out. And you actually said it was mind-boggling. <laughs> <laughs> Why so? Well, I think certainly, you know, Mr. Tharman throughout the campaign, uh, you know, was the front runner. Uh, but I thought, you know, given the very spirited campaign ran by Mr. Nkok Song, uh, and then with the opposition leaders coming out in support of Mr. Tan Kin Lian, um, I thought that maybe that whatever lead he had, um, you know, w- would have been trimmed, if not chopped mm. away. Um, and besides, um, you know, it is hard to, for me initially, right, to, to, have, to have thought that in a presidential election, um, the winner could get 70% because that means drawing votes across the political lines, drawing drawing votes across the political boundary, across uh, socioeconomic classes okay. as well. Um, so I I had said on, on you know on Friday you know that a 60% win you know would actually be a very good result. Um, okay. you know, and, and so 70% to me was was unthinkable in, in a sense that you know he right. was able to to poll as popul- popularly as he was you know within his drawn GRC uh, you know where, where he stood for many yeah. years he himself was was surprised too he did, he did kind of say that yeah. he was surprised by by the high number uh, what it, what about you what do you think similar thoughts as well so 70% is remarkable i think if i were from the ruling party i think i would be quite happy with that because okay. he is associated with the ruling party and you know if the results were reversed right if it was 50 percent, i think a lot of us would sit here and say that oh this shows that there is a brand uh problem with the pap at this point mm. in time so i think if it's 70 percent, then we cannot turn around and say that uh that the reverse is not true although i would i would put a few caveats one is taman has always been more popular than the pap itself right but at the same time i think what it shows is association with the party brand is not as toxic as many online circles would okay, like you okay. believe. So I think that's that's one of the things probably I would take away. From. Let's break that down a bit yeah. because that is one of the big questions. Mm-hmm. So how much of it has to do with the man himself and how much of it has to do with his association with PAP? I think a lot of it has to do with the man. I think he has always pulled higher than his party anyway. I think that. But at the same time, we have seen before, even in other countries' elections, right, where the candidate is extremely credible, extremely popular, mm-hmm. but association with the party can drag that person right. down. So I think one of the takeaways is the PAP brand is is still intact. A- as long as they put a, an extremely credible candidate, okay. I think they can they can take heart in it, right? Of course, they will probably not get a seventy percent in the next general election. Right. I mean, that's that's quite a difficult uh, standard to measure up against. But I think they could take some comfort that okay, okay. people still 
trust the brand. So if it had been perhaps some other minister that had been, uh, you know, the presidential candidate, do you think things would have been quite different? I think so. I think there's no chance anyone else would have gotten 70%. Eugene? I I take a slightly um, different view. Uh, I agree with Wallet that the Tharman brand is exceptionally strong. Um, And so his winning margin uh, is very much a reflection of uh, Mr. Tharman himself. But to be fair, uh, obviously his 22 years in politics, you know, with the ruling party, Mm -hmm. uh, gave him the canvas on which he could profile his experience and his ability, right? But I don't think voters in this presidential election went into polling booths um, thinking along partisan lines. Okay. Uh, I, I, I felt that given the way he polled, uh, it would seem to suggest that, um, you know, voters were very clear that this was not a partisan contest. I think they were relatively confident, you know, that, that, Mr. Mr. Tharman, if elected, you know, would be an independent mm-hmm. president because of his track record of being independent-minded. I felt that in the end, th- this was really an election just about the candidates. Right. The political parties, whether ruling or opposition, didn't really feature too significantly. So, so mm-hmm. although that was sort of the uh, the the campaign stand for Mr. Ng Kok Song, you know, that he was the independent candidate. So, yeah. so in a way, do you think that didn't really resonate with people? No, I think it did. I, I think it did. Um, I, I think, you know, in this election, you know, there was tremendous focus on whether whoever was elected, you know, would be able to exercise uh, the custodial powers, you know, without fear or favour. If you saw the three candidates, you know, they went about quite different tacks, right? So so Mr. Tharman was, please, you know, don't look at, don't use labels, right? Okay. It's, it's a bit simplistic. Um, you know, prior affiliations are not determinative, right? Um, Mr. Tan Kin Lian said, well, I'm the only one, you know, who who is who is not affiliated uh, with the establishment, right? Meaning, uh, whether a political party or or the public service, the government. Um, and Mr. Ng Kok Song tried to occupy that niche position in the middle, right? No political affiliations, but part of the establishment, um, you know, which again gave him the, the the canvas on which to say that look, as GIC CIO, mm. you know, I have all these wealth of experience. Uh, and 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 have this ability as well. So I think it was really the the opposition leaders, you know, backing uh, Mr. Tan Kin Lian, uh, that I think got voters to to really think about, you know, should we be voting along partisan lines or should we just focus uh, on the caliber of the candidates? Okay. Um, and I think for those voters who were sort of undecided, uh, you know, were choosing between Mr. Tharaman and Mr. Ng. I think they decided to pull their votes, you know, meaning place right. their votes behind uh, Mr. Tarman, right? In 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 an attempt not to split the vote okay. um, collectively. That, yeah, right? that, that kind of muddied the waters, I guess. Uh, maybe maybe to uh, slightly disagree with Eugene is that uh, the voters always consider party and person in any right. election, especially in. Uh, plurality of first past the post elections. Singapore is not unique in that regard, so people will always look mm-hmm. at the person, the affiliation. Uh, so, and Taman's voters, also Mr. Taman's voters, I think there are a few, few, few types of people, right? So, one is the pro establishment, and he has a track record there, they're gonna. And for them, right. the fact that he's not independent or he's independent is irrelevant. And if I were the PAP, what are the lessons that I take from this? Mm. How is he able to transcend these partisan lines? And I think part of the image that is needed for a president is you must be above, you must be mm-hmm. seen to be above partisan politics. And even though he was part of the uh, ruling party for 22 years, I mean, let's try to think, was there any point in time where he personally attacked members of the opposition, for instance? Right. And it's it's very difficult to think of any, right? So he seems to have transcended that and even the opposition okay. members speak speak well of him. Wow, okay. So so in a way, he had been able to rise above it all, so Indeed. to speak, you know, Indeed. regardless of... Yeah. Uh, so so all, all the scandals, the recent scandals also that happened, the PAP, also with the Workers' Party, that in a way didn't really change voters' opinions? Do you think that was water under the bridge? I mean, or is it just because we're mature enough to think, well, this doesn't really affect things? It's, it's irrelevant. I, I right. think voters felt it was irrelevant for the purposes of the presidential contest. 
Uh, I think, you know, whatever has happened, uh, you know, to the two leading parties, I think they, they are still relevant. Uh, they're still in the mix uh, when it comes to the mm-hmm. general elections. Now, the last contested presidential election was a four-way fight. In fact, it was a, a battle of the Tans. You know, there was <laughs> Tony Tan, who was the uh, also a deputy prime minister at one point in time. He pulled very close numbers compared to Tan Ching Bok and Tan Ji Se. So is it fair to compare that election with what has just happened, you know? I would say there are obviously some similarities, but I, I would say there are more differences. So one is... Uh, Dr. Tony Tan, at that point in time, he had left cabinet for quite some time. He wasn't as nowhere near the public profile that uh, Mr. Taman had, I think, mm. in the consciousness of voters. And secondly, Tan Cheng Bok in 2011 is not Tan Cheng Bok in 2023. Tan Cheng Bok had just mm. left PAP for five years, maybe. And the third one was that also came uh, on the back of the general election in 2011. And the mood, I think, was very different. Uh, and finally, I think one of the things that we maybe have not talked about enough is uh, Taman's campaign was superbly run, like the physical and the online campaign. You know, he had a lot of these closed-door discussions with influencers. Right. And you could see the multiplier effect of the post, the pictures, the influencers, 100,000 followers, 50,000 followers. And it was very targeted. And of course, he has the resources, he has the know-how, he's been there, done that. Right. Right? But it was still quite innovative. Uh, in the way that he did the online campaign. So so I think there are significant differences that can explain 2011 and 2023. What what about, what about you know, Mr. Ng Kok Song? I mean, in the sense, well, from what you're saying, how much of it then has to do with being known already? So Mr. Taman, you know, is always kind of in the media because, you know, of his role yeah. as a cabinet minister, whereas the other guys, not so much. We only just got to know them a few months ago. Did that play a significant part? I think it did, right? Particularly for uh, Mr. Ng Kok Song, you know, who who was the least well known among the the three candidates, um, and of course, it didn't help, um, you know, that when he first announced his intention to run, um, there were in some quarters, uh, you know, the view that he was a planted mm. uh, candidate, you know, just there to ensure that there would be a contest uh, this time. But but I don't think, you know. People would say that he now that the contest is over, that anyone would say that he was a planted candidate. I, I think he fought valiantly, um, you know. Yeah. But uh, but but I think while it is right, um, you know, um, you know that not having that currency, you know, in terms of being on 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 people's minds mm-hmm. and all uh, would uh, make it uh, difficult, right? So sort of for for a candidate, um, you know, in a very short campaign period. Uh, you know, to be able to get people to know who you are, but yeah. more importantly, you know, to to not treat your intention to run, uh, you know, with any suspicion. Um, I think, in a way, you know, that also affected Tan Kin Lian. You know, the lack of visibility and okay. presence. Um, you know, and 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 Mr. Tharman's visibility, you know, in many ways contributed to what I would describe as the Tharman brand. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Ng and Mr. Tan, it was also a bit like almost coming out of retirement to, to compete, you know. I, I somehow got that sense uh, because, they, as you said, they were not, you know, not kind of not in the swing of things. They had been on the uh, the sidelines uh, for a while. Oh, yeah, I mean, Mr. Tan in particular, right, was still yeah. saying, you know, uh, maybe I, wanna, uh, I would run on my give way to... You know, to Mr. George Go, yeah. you know, who didn't get yeah. a certificate. You what know, if? so so it's kind of wavering. You know, so so yeah. you know, are you serious or are you not? And what what if Mr. George Go had been in the running? Do you think that would have uh, changed things quite a bit? Before the elections, I would say it probably would. But after the elections, looking at the margin, I don't think it would have been significant. Uh, in terms of because how I look at it is Taman versus non Taman votes okay. probably, and even if let's say you put even a stronger candidate than George Go, how many more percent can you shave off, uh, Taman right? You right, five percent max, which I agree above sixty percent is resounding victory in a presidential election. So I think George Go probably if he was there, and Tan Kinlan was there, he would have taken away most of Tan mm. Kinlan's votes, or Tan Kinlan wouldn't have run as well. But I don't think it would be super material to the margin of Taman's victory. What about spoiled votes? Uh, let's get into that for a bit. People worried about the number being you know, a, a bit high, but in the end, the margin was very small. Does this uh, also suggest that people were kind of uh, pretty much clear about what they wanted and who they wanted? Yeah, I, I would say the 
the low number of spoilt votes shows that Singaporeans accept this as a legitimate election. Mm. Uh, the spoilt votes is basically the ultimate protest, you know, even more so than a Tan Kin Lian vote. Right? <laughs> it's the okay. ultimate protest against the system. Whereas a Tan Kin Lian vote, you can say, is an ultimate protest against the PAP. But a spoilt right. vote is saying that I don't see this as legitimate. And even though there were calls by uh, some quite prominent people saying that we should spoil our votes, uh, I would say that it didn't get currency. And also, spoiling a vote, as behavioural economists would say, is not that easy. You may think that you want to spoil your vote. Yeah. Once you queue up already and you make make that effort, it's difficult to spoil that vote. You're so, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you go there and then you decide again. Yeah, I have it. a yeah. choice. Exactly. Let me make a choice, right? Exactly, yeah. So, uh, I never thought that it would uh, gain currency. Uh, it's interesting because the mood in 2023 is very different from the mood in 2017 after President Halima was, was announced as a mm. president-elect. Remember, there was a lot of resentment, yeah, yeah. right? And if, if there was an election then, maybe you have seen higher number of spot votes. But okay. this time around, I would say there is no such concern. It's clearly a huge mandate, the biggest of mandates. Yeah. yeah, I think voters recognize the importance, um, you know, certainly, you know, and, and so felt that they had to make a choice, a choice, uh, you know, from which of the three candidates, uh, you know, they were going to support. There will always be rejected votes, um, you know, people who feel that none of them meets the, the requirements, you know, or or feel that, you know, that even if even if the, to them you know candidate A was the, was the strongest yeah. um, you know but they couldn't get past certain mm. um, certain attributes of of candidate A you know and, and so felt that you know um, they, they can't cast a ballot in, in, in that light um, but people are entitled to to spoil their their ballots okay. um, you know but I've always taken the view that um, you should make a choice right you know as I told somebody right. Uh, who, who told me, oh, they're all not appealing. And I said, well, uh, choose the one who is the most appealing among, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, among the not, n- yeah, even though right. they're all That's not, right. not appealing. Right. You know? And I think, I think Wale put it quite well, you know, the idea that, you know, you spend all the effort, you know, to, to go to the polling station. Uh, I think it takes a, a even greater effort than, you know, <laughs> to, to, to spoil your, <laughs> your, your, your are, are, are some people, or do you think there's a group out there that is all, all talk, you know, no, no real action. Just talk. They want to complain. They want to be unhappy about it. And on the surface, they'll say they will support these other guys. But when they're at the booth with that card in front of them, they choose otherwise. I think there's there's a difference between chatter and when you go to the booth. Then um, there are some serious considerations that that voters uh, think about. Which is why I always say trust the pro- process. If voters have voted, they have voted. Mm. Uh, so I'm never really too worried about voting outcomes because. If you believe in democracy, then you have to accept the voting outcomes. Right. right. Yeah, but I mean, we all were at the, the, the polling stations. I yeah. mean, you know, you, when you look at the mood, um, you know, people were were maintaining the silence, you know, people mm-hmm. spoke in, in low voices. Um, and, you know, you could see the sort of relief when people sort of, ha- when people had cast their ballots, right, you right. know, and, and I thought many of them felt... Uh, very uh, gratified, you know, or, okay. or encouraged by what they did, and and I thought that was really, you know, democracy at work. You know, everyone went about deciding who they wanted to vote. Uh, the ELD made sure that things generally went mm-hmm. in a fairly effective and efficient manner. Uh, and and as what it said, you know, uh, on um, last Saturday, you know, we all woke up to, you know, feeling good. You know, uh, unlike let's say the twenty seventeen mm. or twenty eleven, yeah. you know, where I think. That the national mood was, was actually very different, yeah. uh, you know, and, and it's true. Twenty eleven as well. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, we, I don't. Yeah. Know, people just felt good, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. We're all going out to get pineapple desserts or, <laughs> or, or, or whatnot, you know. You know, there was that celebratory mood, you know, which is yeah, which is yeah. amazing. In a, in a way, I guess people felt that they they had made their choice and their choice was uh, reflected in a way, you know, they had a, a, a role to play in the yeah, whole and process, I think, right? and I think the 30% that didn't cast their ballots for Mr. Tarman yeah. accepted. Exactly. You know, they, they sort of accepted, okay. well, this is exactly. how Singaporeans have spoken right. and decided. Well, yeah. the, right. the next G has to come pretty soon, you know, by 2025. So, what do you think this is, uh, how is this going to play out? Will, will this uh, get the, the parties thinking a little bit differently about how they might strategize moving forward? Do you think this will change in, in the way they approach you know, the, the campaign? 
I think if I were the ruling party, I would take some quiet optimism. As I said, it shows that the brand has not been damaged even by these scandals. However, with with some caveats, as I said earlier, maybe they should think, oh, we should be perceived to be more like Taman, <laughs> uh, the party as a whole, you know, like being this almost a national figure, a national unifying figure above, you know, personal attacks. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Then the other thing which is lurking also in the background is the transition, the leadership transition. Mm-hmm. Should it happen before or after? And I think there are serious discussions to be had on the side of the party. And I'm thinking also about the large margin that uh, Mr. Taman has gotten, right? While I think the party would be encouraged with it, he has also set an incredibly high bar right. for for people, right? For future presidential candidates, even for for the party itself. Like imagine if Taman gets seventy and he, they get like fifty plus or sixty okay, one okay. at the last election. So, uh, so I think there are there are some uh, things for the ruling party to be optimistic about, uh, but with certain uh, caution. For the opposition, I think. Workers' Party not getting involved, I think that was really smart. Okay. For Tan Cheng Wat, Chi Sun Juan, they definitely didn't benefit uh, from endorsing Tan Kin Yen. The question is, how much did they lose? Right. So I think probably in the long run, they wouldn't. it wouldn't be too devastating because there will be many other things that will appear before the next sure. election. Uh, but it definitely didn't help them. The fact that they went strongly against Tan Kin Yen, uh, for Tan Kin Yen, sorry, and they got, he got 13 plus percent. That's, mm. That shows that in the first place, endorsements rarely ever work, even in America, no, celebrity endorsements. It's, right. it, rarely, it rarely ever works uh, uh, to bolster. Suddenly people will say, oh, Tan Ching Bok support, uh, then Therefore I will support. I should, there will be okay. some, but I don't think voters are, are that simplistic. You know, Steve, we are, we are looking at, uh, in a way, an unparalleled situation, right, where you have the president who is more popular than the elected government of the day. Mm. Uh, I think that will take something that, 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 will, that will take getting used to uh, where the ruling party is concerned. I think the ruling party should be concerned about the outcome. Um, you know, I take a slightly different view from Wallet that, you know, that the PAP brand is still intact. Um, because I think through the ballots, uh, voters were signalling you know, what sort of leadership and leader they would like to mm-hmm. see. Um, you know, the way Mr. Tharman campaigned, uh, the way he had conducted himself, you know, throughout his 22 years uh, in, in in politics, you know. And, and I thought the voters did signal that, you know, through the votes that they cast and, and, and the outcome that we saw. Um, and so I would say that, you know, if I were the ruling party, you know, the question now is, you know, are voters going to measure me, you know, by right. that same right. yardstick. Right. Uh, because you are the ruling party. Right. You know, you know. Okay. can you set the tone? You know, can you right. uh, do your policies, um, promote, for example, yeah. respect for and, all? And actually, they'll be in trouble if that is the yardstick because that's a very high... That's a very high, high yardstick. Yeah, that's a very high, high bar. bar. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and, and that's why yeah. I, I take the view that, you know, that, that they, they perhaps would be somewhat... Uh, concern. Of course, you know, mm. if Mr. Tharman had pulled just above 50%, yes, you know, I okay. think they, 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 they will have to be even more worried. Right, you know, right, but right. now I'm wondering, you know, whether, you know, with the fact that you have a stabilizing force in, in Istana mm. come September 14th onwards, um, you know, whether voters might even be thinking, you know, well, we have a stabilizer now in the elected president. Okay. You know, so, you know, mm. could we do we want to send that pointed message to the ruling party? Uh, for the opposition, you know, I, I, I think, as Wallet pointed out, the the endorsements may, may come back to haunt uh, some of them, right? You know, for... Um, but in a parliamentary general election, I think the considerations could be quite different, mm-hmm. right? But but it does suggest that the opposition leaders may not be able to mobilise right. uh, support, uh, you know, as easily as they thought um, they could. So... So, putting it simply, I would say that the presidential election outcome doesn't really change the political equation, right? Okay. The, the, both the ruling party and the opposition parties, you know, have their work cut out for them. Uh, and and less than two years remain of the current parliamentary term, yeah. you know. So, time, time is of the essence. 
uh, they got their work cut out. And but but as rightly pointed out, at least you feel like you have uh, some stability in, in in the Astana now. So mm. that is kind of one area that's been covered. You almost feel like you can rock the boat a bit more in the other camp. Mm. And then again, you know, for the PAP, they will have lost their star player. Yes, right. So that's 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 a huge thing. Also, that the the loss to the front bench of the PAP is not insignificant with right. uh, with him leaving. Uh, and the other consideration, I guess, for the GE is also, I think the PM Lee's team, uh, which included uh, Mr. Taman, is the tried and tested. People sort of know them, yep. and maybe people give them some latitude to make more mistakes, um, but not so much for the 4G as well. So that's another okay. consideration that, that voters probably would have. So, any predictions? When's the GE going to happen? What's the GE? Well, very early. <laughs> very early. <laughs> will, will, will this in, in, in any way encourage them to move things earlier? Yeah, some people have said that, yeah. right? The yeah. snap pull, right? But yeah. I, I doubt yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. I, I doubt that they would be so buoyed by, by this and, and do that precisely for the reasons Eugene mentioned, right? Yes, I, I, I agree with Eugene that. 50% would be worse for them, but 70%, it's not exactly, oh, it's not exactly paradise as well for the reasons right. that, that you mentioned. What if voters say, like, look, this is the standard that we want, right? This yeah, okay. this above partisan politics guy. And, and if they are measured by that, then to be honest, I think that's an unfair also <laughs> measurement. Right. But no. voters will probably think like that. Okay, so you don't uh, think so? No, no early, uh, no early call for the G. Eugene. No, yeah, I mean they, they have lost their talisman uh, in yeah, in yeah. Mister Tarman, um, and I'm not sure they they will be able to find someone quickly enough. Um, but they need as much time as they can, to, you know, to okay. sort out the many issues that people uh, have been concerned about, yeah. like whether they relate to cost of living, mm. uh, housing affordability right. and accessibility, uh, job security, uh, and and of course, you know, you you need time to to show that your public life standards, you know, the, the recent controversies, mm-hmm. you know, relating to corruption as well as the, the MPs resigning over over an affair, um, you know, these things take time to, you know, okay. for the impact to, to weaken and for them to show that they have learned the lessons well. So one one lesson that they shouldn't take away from, from Mr. Thurman's victory is that the ground is sweet or that it is time to go for an early poll. I, I, I think that will be completely misreading the ground. Well, I, I must say that, you know, I am, uh, like you guys, a little bit surprised too, but glad to, in a way, see how things have have come about. And I think it's also a reflection of our society and, and the, the voters today, you know, that we are changing, we are evolving, and we are looking at things quite differently. And it's going to be challenging moving forward because I think, as we know, politics tends to only get dirtier as time goes by. And I don't know if Singapore can continue to stay above it all, you know, and regardless of who our politicians are and on which side they might be on as well. Yeah, so even in this presidential election, you saw some hints of that. Thankfully, not from the candidates, I would say. It's been pretty dignified, right? But you saw online people talking about families and so on, which you never want to see. But I think it's going to be more inevitable. It shouldn't happen, but it will happen. The level of competition was healthy. Sometimes it was robust. Yeah, You know, Eugene said uh, that uh, Uncle Song showed he wasn't a plan. If he was a plan, he was a very good plan right? Right. <laughs> to, to to go out against. No, I mean, I mean, you know, the plan yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Tang in cheek, you know, I, one, yeah, yeah. one wonders whether Mister Tang, Tang Klien was the plan. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, so because some people say that because you know he he would have got people to think you know okay we better not split uh, you right, know the right. votes you know yeah, for. Yeah. For candidates who are completely opposite of Mr. Tan, yeah. um, you know, and and, and so I, I I think that that resulted in an outcome that we saw, you know, voters deciding to pool their votes behind correct, correct. Mr. Tarman, and no. and leaving you know Mr. Ngok Song, you know, with with what I think many would regard as some of a subpar performance, you yeah. know, despite. Yeah. Uh, you know, b- despite the propositions, the value proposition that he brought, yeah. um, you know, to the but table. But you know what? I'm with you, Eugene. I think maybe Mr. Ng was a plan because who else would have planted the cat into the whole campaign? <laughs> you know, so that that was just miraculous. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in, sharing your insights, and you know, giving us uh, shedding a bit of light on the whole situation. And to all of our viewers who be listening in, you know, we hope you've enjoyed the discussion. And any thoughts you might have on it as well, do let us know. You know, drop us a comment. We love to hear from you. Or, also jump online, get onto Spotify, onto Apple Podcasts and, and give us a great review. You know, it really does encourage the whole team. But otherwise, we will be back again next week. Just want to thank my folks behind this podcast. The team here is 
Jacqueline Chan, Joanne Chan, Saya Wynn, Tiffany Ang, Jessalyn Tan, and Crispina Robert. And I'm Stephen Chan signing off saying see you next week. Bye for now.